Okay, it's been a while since I found this comic at a garage sale of all places. And, uh, yeah, just like my last pickup and read. And also just like that last, uh, last book I found, that, that garage sale was being run by someone who was in the video game industry for a number of years. It's a shame I didn't ask her more about this comic since, um, yeah, there's not much info about it on the internet. Um, my best guess is that it was given away as a freebie with the games, or maybe, uh, I don't know, it could have been, could have been given away at a booth at CES to promote the NES as well as the Game Boy game here. Um, because E3 didn't exist at that time. This is probably like, it says 93 on there. Yeah, 93. Anyways, I thought I could scan over the comic and I'm not going to read aloud. <laughs> you can pause if you want to do that. Um, maybe I'll talk about some of the things we're looking at on the page. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Let's flip this out of the, the packaging here. Oh, look at that. First page, we get an ad for Hudson's Adventure Island. One and two, actually. Um, one on the Game Boy and two on the NES, which the Game Boy uh, Adventure Island is kind of a remix of Adventure Island 2 on the game, on the uh, NES, and Adventure Island 2 on the Game Boy is like a remix of Adventure Island 3, kind of. Um, it's in a similar way that the, the Mega Man games are. I've seen one-page ads with uh, comics of Bonk, but I just, I don't know, a, a full, a full one-shot like Felix promoting the game is like, maybe it's just because Felix already had comic book publishing that it was just easier for them to work out that kind of thing, or maybe their fans would expect that kind of thing. Hey Felix, what's this? He's promoting a comic, but um, I think this was done by Archie. She had a bunch of other Archie stuff there, but I'm not too sure. It says. Don Oriolo, publisher and editor. Felix Comics Inc. Okay, so it's not done by Archie. Look at that, already on the second page we have her reference to video games. We got a Nintendo box there, there, and cartridge. I mean, they're obviously... Uh, it was new. Video games were new. They, you know, they didn't have to get it to look exactly like it. They just, you know, oh, it's a video game. References to Hudson on Point Dexter's shirt. Uh, got the magic bag print. This is, this comic's done in the style of the, the 50s, uh, 60s Translux cartoon. And, um, wow, look at these pages, though. Look how, look, I mean, this is early 90s, right? It's like almost 30 years, my goodness. And, jeez, it's still white. And this is newsprint, so, yeah, it's just, I'm, that was when comics used to be really cheap. <laughs> but still, it's held up amazingly well. Um, with the tank, the tank. So in the video game, Felix has uh, this magic bag and he collects different icons on different stages and they allow him to transform into different forms. And uh, there are several types of stages, land, sea, air, space, and um, the bag will go through various transformations, turning into a car, a tank, and like the, the, the platforming, um, land stages, an umbrella, a hot air balloon, a plane. Um, yeah, it's it's part of the part of the allure of the game, I think. My favorite incarnation of Felix has to be the Twisted Tales of Felix the Cat uh, cartoon from the 90s. 
It's a mix of the 1920s Felix with the Translux cartoons of the 50s and 60s. Um, Felix, Felix in the 20s had been known for, he was famous. I mean, people loved him for bas basically breaking the fourth law. What, what, what people love Deadpool now in the, in the, in the theaters, Felix was doing that a century earlier. As well as his Playboy attitude. <laughs> I mean, he um, it often got him into trouble, but he he used uh, the fact that he was uh, a cartoon character painted on a, a cell, um, exploited that fact to use things like his tail or other icons in the scene as tools to get him out of these jams. So, but. Um, but yeah, Felix in the 50s, he was more, um, I know there's a whole generation of people that love that guy, but he, I, I just thought he was this saccharine character made to appeal to children. Um, you know, later on you look at it that way. Um, I, I saw some of the tunes in the library as a kid. Everyone in the cartoon had a really annoying voice. <laughs> I mean, it was the first generation of, of, uh, kids watching TV, right? Baby boomers. So, yeah, they fell in love with that version and, and kept Felix alive. So there's something to that. And yeah, most of the focus was around enemies trying to take the bag because that was where Felix's powers came from rather than his ingenuity and cunning to solve problems and, and ability to use the scenery and uh, just a lot of adapt to all of his challenges so in my opinion it took away a lot of the focus of um, a lot of the, what made the character special in the 1920s cartoon just his ability to you didn't know what he was going to do with a scenery he could pluck it apart line by line he could drain the colors he could use his shadow it was just it was always that was what made the character interesting Though he did use his tail occasionally to solve to solve problems. What did it say on their columns? There's Gopal was here. But uh, but yeah, that was all about the '90s tune, because '90s tune it brought back some of the cast from the '50s, but it kept Felix the hip playboy he was in the '20s, and the uh, he had the he had the look of that character from the late 20s and they brought him to life with this jazzy raspy voice I'm home. Uh, yeah he was a cool cat man so uh, another goalpo was here <laughs> I am grateful though from the 50s tune because I mean like I said the baby boomers they love that tune and that, of course, when they got older in, in the 80s, that led to them reviving Felix and the eventual movie, these video games, and finally, the Twisted Tales of Felix the Cat cartoon. Although, man, look at that, we got Master Cylinder here. They did screw things up, I think, with that, with that series. They had, uh, they had two vo voice actors of Felix and Twisted, and... You know, I like the first guy, but <laughs> they replaced him later on in the tunes. They replaced him with the voice actor from uh, Cow and Chicken, which I thought was a huge mistake because, yeah, it, it, not only was I used to the other guy, but it made Felix sound like he was a a New York City cash chicken clerk. Very just obnoxious sounding. I don't know. But yeah, the original voice actor, uh, Tom Adcox Hernandez, he does the voice of Clarion in the new, newer DC animated movies. So you can check him out there and you can hear a little bit of Felix in that performance. Yeah, it's always been a, a tiny thought in the back of my mind to go back and redub the, the work done by the cow and chicken guy, just going through all of uh, Tom's work. And I don't know, I just, no offense to Mr. Adler, um, 
I loved him as Ickis in, in uh, Real Monsters, but Tom was always Felix to me. So look at that. We got Kitty here in the corner, which uh, she was replaced by Candy in Twisted. Kitty, she had actually been the girlfriend of Felix traditionally, the white cat, all the way back, all the way back for the first cartoon, Feline Follies, right? I don't think she makes an appearance at all in the, in the Twisted show. Radio. <laughs> and that is not the end. Look at that. So they do go through some of the the, um, the progress of the stages here. You know, different levels of air and land and sea. Hey, it's not the end. Make your own thrilling adventures on the new Felix the Cat game. Buy Hudson stuff for the Nintendo Entertainment System. And Game Boy. Jeez, they could have they could have said Game Boy. Always overlooked. But you shouldn't, because this is the better version of the game, in my opinion. It doesn't it doesn't go stale. You can get it, it, it can get really old playing that NES game after a while. So uh, we got an ad for the Felix International Fan Club here. What do they want? They want two fifty and a self-addressed stamp envelope and you get a membership card a quarterly felix fanfare newsletter i don't know i can't imagine much going on with felix beyond i don't i beyond the twisted tales of felix cat how long did that even go on for afterwards but um yeah and actually there are more fans probably of the of the 50s version of felix than than this one i at least I don't know. When I look at all the merchandise, they're of they're of fifties Felix rather than this nineteen twenties thirty ish kind of Felix. We did get some uh, Wendy's uh, Happy Meal toys or whatever they call them, kids meal toys. So there is that copy of the movie on VHS. We never got a copy on DVD, unfortunately. Um, Actually, in the early days of eBay, I, I think I got fooled, I got duped. Someone was selling a copy of the movie on DVD, and I, I think it was just a, a bootleg. Someone put a copy of, the, a really good copy of the VHS on the DVD and sold it. Yeah, I still have that copy, actually. So there you have it. Are you excited? Are you going to go off to your game store and buy a copy of Fields Cat on the NES or maybe on the Game Boy? Like I said recommend the any the uh the game boy version over the nes i actually did a video comparing these two well many years ago on this channel so um maybe i can leave that as a link at the end of the video so i hope you've enjoyed this look and um yeah if you guys know any more about this comic let me know um and hopefully i <laughs> hopefully the creators don't let don't worry about me um, putting this copyright material for everybody to see but come on guys it's promoting Felix the world's most famous cat the orange guy ah. it's been around how many decades right uh, a century a century <sighs> thank you